Hi, this is Rich Coles from Productive Project Solutions. The purpose of this video is to show you how you can set automatic notifications to let team members know when tasks that they're due to do are ready to start. And that's because the preceding tasks that they're waiting on have been completed. And rather than having to go into the sheet and check on this, they'll automatically be notified. So let's have a look. So here I've got my standard time plan uh, that I've used in lots of other videos. And we can see is the key difference here now is I've added this new column called Go. And that's the one which is going to trigger the alerts to say that this task, the preceding task has been completed. And so it is now ready to go on that bit. Again, you can have this column so it's visible or you can have it hidden and it's just going to trigger an automation. So if I go to the Manage Workflows, you can see it's got an alert which is ready, um, alert when ready to start. And what this is going to do is when Go changes to checked, it's going to send a note to the owner to say your task is ready to start and it's going to insert the task name here and send you um, a few fields in terms of start date, end date and task name. So that's how the automation works. Again, you don't have to have the automation. It's how you want to use it. You can now use this checkbox and get it to appear in reports or whatever in many different ways. So how is this happening? Well, let's have a look behind the scenes on that bit. So what I've got is with that go column, which I've added in, I've also got a few hidden columns as well, which I don't feel are necessary to be seen on the screen. Again, you want to keep your plans as simple as possible for people. There's a lot of information going on here already. People don't need to see this information in the background. So the first thing here is it needs a row ID. This is to help you create a row number. What the row number is, to, is giving it this absolute reference to say what is the row number. So you can see 2020 and that all lines up here. And this is needed for part of the formula in this column here, which is the successors. And this is the successors is the opposite of your predecessor column here, where that automatically comes on when you enable dependencies. The successors column is a formula that you need to add in. And what it will do is it will look and say, what are the tasks that follow on from that are the successors of this task here? So what it's doing is it's looking on this one. So row six, it's saying the tasks that follow on from this one, here we go, is seven. And eight, you can see from the arrows there. And again, you can check above. So it's working that out automatically with that formula here. And what that does is then you've got a formula in this go box, which then looks at and assesses and then marks to say if it meets the criteria on that side. So let's work through and see how these formulas are done. And so what I'm going to do in this case is I've unhidden my row ID column here. And you can see the numbers out of sequence here because I added that column in later on, um, wrong that row in later on. So the number sequence is automatic. And so that is out of order here. So what I do now is I'm going to add in a new column. So insert column to the left. I'm going to call this one row number. And so let me add in row number. And this is just a normal text number field. And what I'm going to do is I have pre-prepared the formula to make it easy and copy that in and paste it into here. So you can see it's automatically picking up and it's looking at the row ID. And the purpose of this one is just to give the absolute reference for that row number. And I've done a previous video on this one, so I won't dwell here. So if I press enter, it's going to give you the absolute number. Turn this to a column formula. There we go. And let's just scan down and you can see, for example, 92 is 23, 23, 23. That's correct on that side. So one, you've got your row number. There, that's needed again for the successor. So the next piece you're going to do is you're going to add in a column to here and we'll add in wherever you want it to. But we're going to add in is a column called successor. And what this needs to be is a drop down list and it needs to allow multiple values per cell so that when it's looking, it knows it looks at each number independently and says, is that a successor is an independent number. So, OK, I've added that column in and in this one, here's the formula which goes in. So the formula here is join successors at row and with a character 10. The character 10 is a delimiter, so that creates a difference um, and it creates a carriage return which separates these from each other. So I paste this one in, press enter, and you can see they've been added in and I'm now going to convert to column formula and then we'll add it in up and down the sheet on that bit. So one last column to go, which is the go column. So I'm going to add that one in go and this one is a checkbox just because that's the indication to say yes or no um, on this side so I'm going to add that one in and 
in here. Let's just copy this formula and I'll come back to the formulas in a moment just so you can see those. Um, <clears throat> and so if I paste this one in here, so just one bit to flag that I've added into this formula here, which is, uh, again, I feel this is more useful to do. So it's saying if the predecessor for this task is blank, then make it blank. And the reason why I do this is if I use this without this, this bit at the beginning, tasks lower down are ticked ready to go because they don't have a predecessor. If you see on this one, this doesn't have a, doesn't have a predecessor task because it's a parent. And so that will have a tick saying it's ready to go, which can be a bit confusing depending on how you're using this. So I personally like to add this in to make sure that that's not ticked and it never will be ticked um, on that case. And then the rest of the formula is what it's doing is it's looking through there and it's looking for the successor um, to say, is that right successor? Um, is there the successor? And then it's evaluating the successor to say, is that one completed or not? Is it blank? And if it's, if it's, either blank or it's less than 100% um, complete, then it's going to give a negative value or a zero value, otherwise it's gonna mark it as complete. So if I enter, oops, unpausable, let me just have a look in terms of what's gone on here, successes. So the reason on that one is, let me just take this out for a moment, is because I didn't put an S on successors. So let me enter that in here and paste it in and there we go, you can see it's now picked up the right column, enter in, and that's ticked here. So come back to column formula, that's now working properly on that basis, and then let's just test it. So you can see now, by the way, from the predecessors, that these ones aren't showing ready to go. Well, because it's the start of the project, you know they are ready to go right from the start, so that's fine, um, you know, I'm not that picky on that bit. But if I now go in and start saying these ones are 100% com complete, you can see the tasks below, are now aligning up to say they're ready to go. So let's just do a few more on that bit. So that's ready to go. I'll just copy and paste there. You can see ready to go, ready to go, ready to go. And so it's all working as planned on that basis here. So that's all good on that bit. So this is how you do it. Let's just zoom in so you've got a nice view here in terms of the formulas. Let's see if I can get any bigger. There we go. So these are the formulas um, that so you can copy those down and this is how I do it in this one. Again, I can't put this in the notes for the video because there are some characters which YouTube, the system doesn't allow them to be in the notes section, so hence the picture here. Um, and I trust that's been useful in terms of giving you another way to save time for you and your team in terms of being aware of when tasks are ready to go and getting automatic notifications. Now let's just go back in to the tasks at the top here and these have been triggered off. So. That's the way that this one works. So I trust that's been useful. Thanks for watching and more videos, tips and tricks to follow. Bye for now.